It's time for my June wrap up. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jules and I am here to talk about all the books that I read in June. It was a lot. I read a total of 26 books in the month of June. Um, I thought this was going to be my highest amount of books that I read this month, but it tied with April and I had a lot in April because of old school April. I did a lot of middle grade point horror things that were fast reads. This month I did a challenge and I also read a lot of graphic novels, middle grades, regular books. For my 26 books read, 16 were physical books, 4 were ebooks, and 6 were audiobooks. My average rating of those 26 books is 3.26. This is the lowest average rating I've had so far this year. Total pages read was 7,769 highest amount of pages read so far this year. For the genres, I had eight cozy mysteries, three graphic novels, eight thrillers, two fantasy, four middle grade, and one sci-fi. I had no romance. Like what? For my star readings, I had zero DNFs, which I'm pretty excited about that. I had one one star, three two stars, 12 three stars, eight four stars, and two five stars. So obviously my books were like middle of the road, three stars for me, majority of them for this month. Our usual, I'm not gonna show you the books, I'm just gonna pop up a picture of them. If they, if I read them for a vlog, I will tell you and you can go check out the vlog for all my thoughts on them. We are going to go from lowest to highest. Here we go. My, the one star read that I had was Middle of the Night by Lucy Foley. I had an e-arc of this and it took me almost the entire month to read this. It was not a, it was not a fun time. Actually, it took more than more than I think I started this in May but didn't finish it until June. But it took me almost a good month to read this book. Like I could not I couldn't I just didn't want to pick it back up. So there were just way too many point of views on this. Like I thought it was going to be kind of I thought there was going to be some like maybe cultish weird happenings going on which kind of alluded to that toward the end I don't know I it did it just didn't come together way too many POVs and I could not keep track so it was not only people but it was also just like a summer journal so you didn't know who was writing it there was also multiple timelines so it just was so confusing I would have DNF'd this book if it wasn't for a net galley review it, it was it was bad for me, just bad. Moving on to my two stars. Two of these were Cozy Mysteries. I read for a reading vlog, so I will have that linked. You can go get my thoughts on that. So those were Dying for Strawberries by Sharon Farrow and A Salt and Pepper by Leslie Bedowitz. So they were just not great for me. <laughs> the other two star I had was The Father by John Nichol. I did this for a themed vlog that I did for Father's Day, reading books that had father in the title. This was just not a good book. So I have all my thoughts in that vlog. Go check it out. It's not an exciting vlog because none of the books that I read for that were great. But if you want to know what books to not pick up, maybe go check out that vlog. Moving on to three stars. This is my biggest category because this is where most of my books fell for the month. So a couple of graphic novels that I read. I did The Secret of Danger Point by Kim Duenel. Duenel I don't know how you say that. And Treasure Lake by Jason Pamet. These were, I read for obviously the Survivor Challenge because I was trying to read books quickly and they either had like the summer theme or the water theme, beach theme. They had water on the cover. So they were just average graphic novels. They were cute. I liked the artwork in both of them um, and I had a good time with both of them. Then I have The Unteachables by Gordon Corman. I read this for a prompt of like having to overcome an obstacle. So The Unteachables is basically about a class of students who either have um, learning disabilities or you know ADD so like can't focus. Just things that they they just don't really care about school or learning or whatever. The teacher in the class is like due to retire soon, so he just doesn't even really care about this class. He's just like, whatever, just let me get through this and finish it. And um, so they all end up kind of helping each other want to learn or teach, in this case for him. 
Um, and it's just about they're forming a relationship with them. And so that's why they're the unteachables because like nobody cares about them because they don't care about it. There's another teacher who helps him like get them interested and wanting to learn. And so it just goes along that journey. It was kind of funny. I read Fang of the Vampire by Tommy Donbavind. I don't know. I don't know how you say that. Um, it's the first in the Scream Street series. So it's a spooky middle grade. I picked this up thinking it would kind of be like, kind of like Goosebumps, but obviously like a knockoff Goosebumps version. And it was just okay. I loved the covers. The covers are cute. And inside they also have some like pictures and stuff. And so I was hoping I would love it so that I would continue in the series, but I didn't love it. So I will probably probably not. <laughs> I read uh, Goosebumps Horrorland Say Cheese and Die Screaming by R.L. Stein. Um, and this is obviously an extended book on the, you know, Say Cheese and Die, which is the, they find the old camera and they take pictures and whenever someone's picture gets taken, they end up getting hurt. I think there's a movie out like that. I don't remember what it's called, but um, another middle grade I read was Finch House by Sierra Birch. Um, this was an okay book. I actually have this in my last like weekly vlog, so you could go and get my thoughts on that. It wasn't very spooky. It was a good time, but a not, not enough for me to keep on my shelf for me to like go back and read it again. Um, and then I have a YA, what I thought was thriller, <laughs> uh, The Cousins by Karen McManus. I also have this in my last weekly vlog and have my thoughts on it. It just didn't really seem like a thriller. It was just kind of a family drama, maybe. There wasn't really any kind of mystery in it. I don't know. It was just, it was just middle of the road. The next two books were books that I read for the father-themed blog. Um, obviously, they were just okay, so they, they got three stars. Um, that is The Good Father by Diane Chamberlain and The Father She Went to Find by Carter Wilson. So again, you can go to the vlog if you want my thoughts on those. Neither of them are books that I would probably recommend anyone picking up. They were just okay. My next three star is Sprinkle with Murder by Jen McKinley. I don't think I have this in a vlog because I don't think this was one I read specifically for a cozy vlog. I did a buddy read with a few ladies and it was okay. I, I think I liked it enough to continue in the series or at least try the next like one or two books in the series. A couple of friends own a cupcake shop, a bakery, and their other friend is a male friend and he is getting married. And the three of them have a really good relationship, but the girl that he's marrying is not kind of a great person. She ends up getting murdered. Obviously the girls at the cupcake shop are suspects and because she died by one of their cupcakes <laughs> and so they all just kind of have to do some investigating to figure out who the killer was my last three star is the last murder at the end of the world by Stuart turton i read this for gwen's patreon so this is a sci-fi dystopian so this is definitely out of my comfort zone i didn't i wasn't sure i was gonna love it um i didn't love it but i didn't hate it like some of the girls in our group did um, so you're following a group of individuals. There's been like, kind of like an apocalypse happened. So there is this like deadly fog that has come and has wiped out, you know, most of the world. And there is a small group that has been, you know, has retreated to this island and they have somehow kept this fog at bay to not get to them and basically science stuff. It's just strange. <laughs> So like the villagers all have like certain jobs they have to do. Everybody goes to bed at the same time at night. Sometimes they wake up without memories of things and somebody gets murdered and then they wake up. Nobody remembers like what happened. And then all of a sudden the fog is moving in and they have to figure out who, who the murderer was and how to stop the fog. So anyway, it was definitely different. It keeps you thinking a lot. Definitely a thinker book, but so yeah, I'm glad I read it. I didn't, I, I had a pretty good time with it. I, after the discussion with the girls, I was thinking kind of maybe more 3.5, but since I don't do half stars, I'm keeping it at a three. Okay, on to my four stars. I had eight books in my four stars. Four of these were cozy mysteries. So I had a good time with my cozies this last month. So I have Murder at the Beacon Bake Shop and Murder at the Blueberry Festival. Both of those are by Darcy Hanna. I had a great time with this. This is book one and three. Um, book two is a Christmas themed and so I'm actually reading that this month for a Christmas in July cozy blog I'm gonna do. 
So Murder at Beacon Bake Shop's not, I don't have, I didn't do a vlog for that, but Murder at the Blueberry Festival is in one of my vlogs for this month. And it was such a fun time. It had all of the fun summery festivals. There's a goat in a boat situation. It was just so comical. So the first one starts with Lindsay when she moves to Beacon Harbor. She buys a lighthouse and she tra transforms it into a, a bakery. So that first one's just kind of her moving in and figuring, you know, everybody out, meeting everybody in the town, um, and obviously solving a murder that happens. I'm definitely continuing this series and I'm definitely recommending that everybody pick this cozy series up. The next one was Crime and Poetry by Amanda Flower. This is a magical bookshop mystery. Buddy read this with Tammy, Leah, and Wendy. So this one was a fun time. Uh, Violet ends up coming home because her grandma fakes that she's sick and needs her to come help her when in reality the grandma's trying to get her back to this magical bookshop so that she can be the next one to take over and run the bookshop. So she kind of lures her there and she's like, I have no intention of staying, but there is a magical tree that go is, is through the middle of the bookshop. The books kind of like fly off the shelf to like whatever the customer's needs are. They just kind of know what book the customers need. There's a cute magical cat in it. So I had a really good time with this. Definitely will be continuing in it. And then my other cozy that I gave a four star was The Uninvited Corpse by Deborah Senefelder. We are following Hope, who is a food blogger. Hope also has a friend who is a garden blogger, but she also has a book. So she's a new author. So she's doing this like um, kind of like a big party where it's like a book signing, but also a garden display. Someone ends up dead in the garden and then they're blaming her sister because this person and her sister had this like realtor rivalry going on. Anyway. Had a good time with it i will definitely check out the next in the series two of my four stars were thrillers i read everyone is watching by heather gutenkopf this was for jess's book club and this was a crazy fun time so basically the a bunch of people go to this like big estate for this like competition and they don't know what the competition really is but they have to go and their premise is to win like 10 million dollars i think it's a lot of money maybe more than that i don't know but they're not told like what they have to do. So they come in, they can't have their phones, they can't have any contact with anybody outside. They just come in and they have to do these like challenges and they're different kinds. Some are like physical, some are mental, you know, whatever. And it gets crazy and people die. <laughs> Why it's called everyone is watching is because it's televised. So people can watch it live as it's happening. So yeah, it was just a good time. I really enjoyed it. Um, my other four star is The Lake by Natasha Preston. Obviously, I love Natasha Preston. This one is mentioned in my last weekly vlog that I just posted, so my thoughts are in there. I don't have a lot of thoughts because unfortunately with thrillers, you just can't give a lot of information without giving stuff away, but just know it was a good time. It was a very good campy thriller. My last four star is Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This is book two in the Letters of Enchantment series. The first one being Divine Rivals. I loved, loved, loved Divine Rivals. It was my best book of the year. I have a couple other books that have now taken its place since then, but it was still very good. And book two is also very good. However, book two follows along more of the war between the gods. So while I didn't love it as well, it was still very good and I still obviously gave it a four star and enjoyed it. Moving on to my last two books. I only had two five stars. Um, I do obviously like one better than the other, but uh, one of them is Class Reunions or Murder by Libby Klein. Yes, it's a cozy. I don't give cozies five stars a lot unless it's my girls that I collect and I read them all the time and I know I'm going to love their books. This book was so funny. I was laughing out loud. I cannot tell you how many times. So it was just such a good time. So I do have this in one of my cozy mystery vlogs. So definitely go check that out and get all my thoughts on it. I loved it. Definitely continuing in the series. Contemplated purchasing them for my shelf. I'm still on the fence about that because they are not all the same size. And I can't stand when books aren't the same size. But I still, I'm still keep thinking back to it. That's why it's a five star for me is because I keep thinking back to it. And I keep thinking, do I want to get them on my shelf? Do I not want to? I'm probably going to. I'm probably going to have them on my shelf. <laughs> and then my top five star of June was Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass. 
this book. This is probably my favorite book in the series so far. And that's saying a lot. I've, get, I've rated all of them four or five stars. Um, so I've loved every single book in the series. But this is probably my favorite. So if you haven't read the series, then you probably don't know why it's my favorite. But if you have read the series, then you probably do know why it's my favorite. So, and this, I'm pretty sure, is now my top book of the year. Yeah. That is it. That was a lot of books. Thank you guys so much for watching and for being here.